一体どこに目つけたいうわボボボボボボボボボボボボボボボボボボボボボボボボボボ What I want is neither money nor status, but military might. And that perfectly sums up Sir Crocodile. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Fly. I hope you grab your snacks because today we're talking about our favorite villain. Well, not everyone's favorite villain, but one of my favorite villains, Sir Crocodile, former warlord of the sea. Now, you see, it's been over a decade since we actually saw Crocodile play a part in the main story and it's been even longer more than a decade since crocodile was first introduced to us in the main story now every once in a while oda loves to show crocodile again in the story showing his reaction to the world at large and to luffy's antics such as when luffy became one of the new fifth yonko fifth yonko wait no that's not how it is a fifth emperor considered to be one of the new emperors of this you guys get what i'm trying to say when luffy got a bounty of 1.5 billion crocodile smirked at the news kind of showing he's a little bit proud or at least impressed that luffy is showing crocodile wrong because crocodile did warn luffy when they first met that the new world is not very kind and that you will lose your will like what happened to crocodile when he entered and he immediately left after getting his ass handed to him by whitebeard and other pirates it's like ever since impel down in the events of the marine ford war and with Luffy going back and ringing the ox bell 16 times, it kind of lit a fire under Crocodile, giving him inspiration and wanting him to go after the title of Pirate King once again, making new plans and new moves in the new world. We still have no idea what he's been up to ever since or what his new bounty is. I'm pretty sure his bounty is pretty high because we know that if the world government knew about what he was doing in Alabasta, his bounty would have been 160 million and adding to him escaping Impel Down and being involved in marine ford war and all the antics that he was doing in the new world his bounty is probably a lot lot higher than we last seen it maybe even passing the 500 million bounty range because crocodile is a very dangerous foe and a very dangerous character roaming in the new world right now but with that being said we do know crocodile's character he likes to plan things and hide in the background until it's ready to enact his evil diabolical plan he's sort of like a james bond villain which is why i love Crocodile, he's one of my favorite villains in the series. Top three, in case anyone was wondering about where do you rank him? Because everyone loves a little ranking, but I'm going a little bit off point. Crocodile needs to return in the story. And Crocodile, ever since Marine for the War, was probably plotting and trying to make a plan on how he can access and become the new Pirate King. Now, the fascinating thing about Sir Crocodile is that although he was introduced to us about two decades ago, we actually don't know much about his upbringing or his past. We only know little bits and bits of it. And it wasn't actually until about 10 years after Alabasta in the Impel Down arc, we started learning a little bit more about Crocodile's past and that he had a run in with Whitebeard and he has a grudge against him. And also, there is a secret that Ivankov has over crocodile and we have yet to know what that secret is and we know from his clash with luffy that he was once a pirate just like luffy when he started out heading to become the next pirate king but then his dreams got crushed once he entered the new world because he was a bit too cocky and everything started to change and yet with that being said and crocodile being introduced so long ago there's still a lot of mystery and secrets surrounding Crocodile, which is why Crocodile needs to return in the story once again. And with Oda sometimes showing Crocodile reacting to the world news, you know that Oda still has Crocodile in the back of his mind just waiting for the perfect opportunity to bring him back into the story. Which lucky for us, a door has been opened and an opportunity has reared its head, and that is the Wano Country arc. And you're probably wondering, what the hell is Crocodile doing in Wano Country? Well, let me explain. Jack, Queen, and King were discussing who the new business partner would be since Doflamingo is no longer around. And this might be the perfect opportunity that Sir Crocodile has been waiting for. We know from Marine Ford War that Crocodile and Doflamingo knew each other in the past, and Doflamingo even offered Crocodile to work together. But Crocodile declined because he worked solo. And we know that Crocodile does not like Doflamingo, so what better way to spite Doflamingo and spin in his face than to take over his underground dealings. We know that Crocodile used to work in the underground with Baroque works, and he is interested in weapons, most specifically ancient weapons, and more on that later on. And with Oda and his editors claiming that One Piece is indeed near its end, what better time for Crocodile to return than now? He can finally become the underground worker. And with Doflamingo gone, this is the perfect chance for Crocodile to take over Doflamingo's 
underground dealings and everything that Doflamingo left in his defeat, which is actually ironic and funny because when Crocodile and Doflamingo reunited in Marineford War, Dofi was making fun of Crocodile about Impel Down and asking if he enjoys the baptizing waters that they give down there. And it's actually funny because now Doflamingo is the one who's an Impel Down enjoying those baptizing torturous hell waters. <laughs> But also, recently, Big Mom and Kaido have just spoken about being in an alliance and looking for the ancient weapons to take over the world and put fear into everyone's hearts. And you can't talk about ancient weapons without our boy, Sir Crocodile, who is actually the one who introduced ancient weapons into the story because that was his goal in Alabasta. He was looking for the ancient weapon Pluton because that would help him become Pirate King. And with Big Mom and Kaido looking and in search of Pluton, or at least one of the ancient weapons, then I think it's a perfect chance and opportunity for Crocodile to come in. And with two Yonko in one area, Crocodile might take this chance to take two birds with one stone. If you have two Yonko dying and leaving a huge gap in the world, and finding the location of an ancient weapon, and taking over the underground business of Doflamingo, Crocodile is well and ready to take the empty throne in the current throne wars. Crocodile would be helping Kaido and his allies by supplying them with weapons but having his own ulterior motives at the end of the day. I was watching Stampede recently once again and I love Crocodile's role by being in the background and plotting, trying to become Pirate King knowing that he's still the devious little rascal that we all know and love. But there's also another time for Crocodile to rear his head into the story once again if he doesn't show up in Wano country and that is with the revolutionary army because we know that Ivankov is dangling over a secret over Crocodile's head and many people have assumed or guessed or predicted theorized that Crocodile is actually a female and I'm kind of cool with that that'd be kind of interesting that Crocodile was once a female that turned into a man because Ivankov is known for changing people's sexes and I don't think Crocodile would want anyone to know that he was once a woman because we've seen throughout the story that at times the females of the story do think that they are weak compared to the male counterpart. This was the main component for Queena and her character arc where she thought that her being a female was weak and that she would have been better off being a male and that she couldn't be the strongest swordsman in the world because of her gender. So the same could have been with Crocodile where after he lost to Whitebeard and lost his arm and got that scar over his face that he met Ivankov and begged him to change his gender or sex I believe and he became a man because he believed that he was too weak and he needed that to become stronger. But also after Dress Rosa it was revealed that Doflamingo was hiding out these secret material and weapons and Dragon wanted them so maybe Crocodile might have his eyes set on those weapons as well thus coming into conflict with the revolutionary army and coming into conflict with Ivankov thus revealing his dirty little secret. Whatever that secret may be I'm just very interested in what it is maybe it's more of his upbringing like maybe he was a former slave and he just doesn't want anyone to know and the rev saved him but whatever the secret is i think we all want to know what crocodile's past is since it's been so long he was introduced and yet we know very little about his past and i would just love to see an interaction between him and nico robin once again after the whole betrayal of alabasta we saw a glimpse of it back in stampede which was great Anyways guys, that's all. I don't want to take up too much of you guys' time because I know you guys are very busy. I just really want to talk about Sir Crocodile and his past and when he will return to the story. Don't forget to rate the video, subscribe, and click the bell icon to stay notified. Also share the video because it will help me help you get better content and grow. Put down in the comments what you think of Crocodile and his past and when you think he will return to the story. And hopefully the next time you see Crocodile appear in the story, you'll have some form of hockey because Crocodile is the perfect example of what Peckhams was saying about Loki users being too cocky, thus resulting in his defeat in the new world. Before the video ends, I just kind of want to show a little bit of appreciation, I guess. I want to go over some of my favorite comments or some of the funniest comments I saw ever since I started YouTube. So we're going to do that right now. This is in response to my video, What Happens to Zoro After Wano? And Gigi Adelso says, I think he loses his virginity and and Wano so he becomes extremely OP. <laughs> I, I don't think Zoro will have sex in the story. Not because Oda said no romance, but because Zoro will probably get too lost to even find the hole. Probably end up somewhere else. J Official says, remember I'm your number one fan, so don't forget me when you blow up. Don't worry, Jay, I will never forget you. In fact, you will be immortalized forever by being in this video. Thank you guys for supporting me. 
I love you. I I just made it awkward. Like I do love you, but I don't love you guys because I don't know you. Let's let's just go on. Zoro takes a bath once a week. Sanji takes it every day. From this, we have a clear answer. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is my favorite comment. Zoro is confirmed to have smegma. Now I may or may not do this often. We'll see. I'll try to do this once in a while. So don't ask me. Just want to give you guys some love and appreciation. We're also close to that 1,000 sub mark. And once we hit that, I'll give you guys my favorite straw hats from least favorite to favorite, and also maybe a Q&A. I'll think about it. But with that being said, I hope you guys have a good day and a good night. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Toodles.